Okay, so here's the testing setup of seeing how these perform when charging them below 32 degrees. This test is to figure out if they have some sort of low temperature charging protection and to see what actually happens when you test charging them when they're this cold. Now, these have been sitting out for over 48 hours and it's been really cold lately. If you look at this thermometer, you can see it's under 20 degrees Fahrenheit, actually kind of hovering near 10 degrees. Super cold, guys, my hands are freezing. So I have two different ways to test this out. We're gonna test charging with AC input. This is an extension cord running from the house. We'll see what happens with AC charging. And then to test DC charging, I have a large 12 volt battery with the Blue Eddy charging enhancer to simulate a 400 watt solar panel. So we'll connect up AC and DC charging on each one, see if we get an error code, see if they actually charge. And then the interesting thing is the Pecoron E1000, because this has built-in heaters, what's gonna happen as this one gets connected up? Is it worth actually having the heaters if you are camping in some sort of cold environment? Well, we're gonna find out. So we're gonna start with the Blue Eddy AC180. So let's turn it on. Let's see what happens if we plug it in. So this thing should be ice cold. Oh, this cable is so stiff. Okay, we do have a temp error down here. So that is great. Um, this is not charging below 32 degrees. I'm gonna test with DC input now. So now I have the Blue Eddy charging enhancer set up. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so we get a temp um, indicator flashing here. So yes, this does have low temperature charging protection, but the only way to warm it up is to get it in a warm space for a long period of time. So good to see that it has temperature protection. So next up in our testing, we have the Anchor C1000. Um, I've just turned it on. Let's see, we're sitting at 83%. Let's first test uh, AC input. Um, I don't see any, oh, look at that. Temp sensor, sweet, well, good to know. Um, so this one does have low temperature protection as well. Let's try DC input. The screen is still flashing the temperature icon, so it probably just flagged a low temp um, error and it's probably gonna stay until it warms up. Okay, yeah, so we're still not charging um, plugging in with DC input. So it looks like the anchor does have built-in protection. So the next power station that we'll be testing with is the DJI Power 1000. Um, if you look at the background, you can see a shadow here and that's because the sun is coming up. Now I'm not worried about that. I don't think the sun's gonna warm these up at all. It's still really cold out here and the cells are behind these plastic cases. But let's go ahead and test charging with AC input on this one. So we are going to flip this open oh my gosh that is so hard to move with it being this cold yeah it's interesting the plastic kind of performs differently oh it just turns off okay yep okay so interesting i hope i didn't break it okay yeah it's beeping so um good to know so this one is just gonna Hopefully not beep forever. Let's see if we can turn it back on. Okay, so no error on the screen, but it did sh Okay, that absolutely stinks. I was basically running through all the testing and I realized my microphone died because it's so cold. So going to a wired mic, let's go back to testing the DC input on the DJI Power 1000 to see what happens. Um, we're gonna plug the Blue Eddy charging enhancer into this to see if it charges with DC input. Okay, so yes, the charging enhancer is on. Let's go ahead and plug one of those. Chickens are waking up. Hear them in the background. Okay. Um, okay, so I have a battery with a shield on it. So I'm guessing that's indicating it's uh, got some sort of charging protection enabled. Let's let's unplug this and see if that goes away. Okay, yes, that does go away. So at least with the DC input, you have um, charging protection. And then with the AC input, it appears to just shut off. So uh, let's move on to the next power station. So I've just turned on the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, and right away when we turn this on, we're getting an error on the screen, 012 with a flashing temperature icon. So um, instantly it knows that it's not supposed to be charging this cold. 
Uh, I am curious though, can we turn on the AC inverter? Okay, I heard a click and we have uh, AC output here. So you definitely can discharge this. And I should have clarified that um, these power stations do discharge when, it this when it's this cold, but they don't charge. So you can use them, you just can't charge them. But let's go ahead and connect in AC charging just to see what happens. And then we'll connect in DC charging. So starting with the um, AC charging cable. And it's connected. We have a indicator right here letting you know it's connected, but we have zero watts going in. So um, it is not going to charge with AC input. So let's unplug that. And then we'll test with um, the charging enhancer, DC input. Let's plug that in. Okay, so we also have the solar charging icon right there, indicating that a solar panel is connected, but it is not going to charge. We're still getting that 012 error with the uh, temperature sensor flashing. So uh, this will not charge. Um, so it is protecting the batteries when they are this cold. So a good sign that it does have low temperature charging protection. Now, the last power station that we'll be testing here is the Pecoron E1000 LFP. Now, this is different than all the other models because this actually has built-in heaters. So, we'll be seeing if the heaters actually work with DC and AC input. See if we get some sort of indication that heaters are turning on. And then we'll see how long it takes to heat the battery up at this temperature to start fully charging. So, let's go ahead and start the AC charging. Let's plug this in. Okay, so right there on the screen, we do have a battery with little... Uh, squigglies under it. I'm guessing that's like heat rising to the battery. Okay. Um, we have zero watts input right now, but I'm guessing the batteries are heating up. Okay. So we got five watts. Let's see if anything changes there. Let it go for a little bit longer. Five watts again, 22 watts. Okay. And we are getting just a little bit of uh, charging on the battery there. Like it's moving. So I'm not sure if this is um, wattage going into the battery cells or if it's wattage going into the heaters. But let's test DC input really quick. Okay, we have our DC input icon there. We also have the battery heater indicator there. Let's see if we get any wattage on the screen. So it looks like it's going to heat up the batteries. Okay, so I just ran and got this little timer. I just started it. I'm just gonna set it up here. And this will just, you, know, that's, you guys can't really see that. Can you see that? Yeah. So I'm gonna leave this for a bit, see how long it takes to actually start charging at a faster rate. Um, yeah, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, who knows? The timer will let us know. Okay, so at the 15 minute mark, well, it's actually the 16 minute mark you see the charging has really jumped up in speed and we no longer have the heating icon. So the battery cells must be warm enough to charge at uh, basically nearly full speed. So uh, pretty awesome. I've never tested a power station with the built-in heaters and it appears to work just as advertised. Now having built-in heaters on your power station is pretty cool, but there are a lot of power stations out there that don't have built-in heaters. So how can you warm them up without those heaters. So what I wanna try with this one here, the Blue Eddy AC 180 is turning on the AC inverter and then putting this blanket over it to see if the AC inverter will create enough heat to warm up the battery cells. And we'll see how long that takes, 30 minutes to an hour, we'll find out. And then with this one here, I have the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus inside this cooler with a small um, heater. So it's gonna be connected to the AC inverter. We're gonna turn on the AC inverter, power up the heater for five minutes, let it absorb a bunch of heat, turn it off, you know, kind of let it do its thing and then turn the heater on if we need to. And we'll see how long it takes for each of these options to warm up the batteries inside. So the test has been going for about seven minutes. Um, I did use my thermal camera to get an ambient screenshot of the temperature in the shed. It's uh, 26 degrees. So I have the AC inverter on for the Blue Eddy with the blanket on top and then I have the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus with this 150 watt heater running. Now it does show on the screen that it's still in uh, cold temperature protection. So uh, let me get some screenshots with my thermal camera. Okay, so right here I'm seeing 67 degrees. The bottom of the cooler is still a bit cold. 
And over here, I'm seeing about 80 degrees on the top of the cooler, but yeah, the bottom's still cold. Yeah, so the bottom of the area is still really cold. The power station's still cold to the touch, so we're gonna have to let this run a lot longer. So if we check in on the timer here, we are almost at the hour mark. Now I have been checking in about every 15 minutes and at the 45 minute mark, this was not yet warm enough. But it's been about 15 minutes, so let's go ahead and check in again. So if we zoom in on the screen here, okay, so we're sitting at 69% and there's no uh, temperature protection icon anymore. So that's a good sign. I think it's warmed up. So let's go ahead and test it out and see if it'll start charging. So I've just turned off the heater and the battery is charging because it's warm enough. You can see we're about 180 watts and that's because we're charging from a 12 volt battery with the uh, XT60i adapter so you can get the higher amperage. But take a look at this. We dropped down from 86% down to 69%. Um, so you do use a big portion of the battery uh, to heat up the inside of the cooler to heat up the cells inside. Now the charging setup is just super simple. I have this large 12 volt battery with these Anderson power pole connections on them, and I'm just running an XT60i cable straight into the power station. That's how we're able to charge faster. So uh, pretty interesting. Comparing this to the Peckrun E1000, it was nice to see that that didn't use battery capacity to heat up the internal cells. Basically, it uses the power coming from solar or AC charging to heat up the battery inside and then it starts charging. And with some sort of workaround like this, you have to use the battery capacity to heat up the space, heat up the batteries, and then it will start charging. So it's definitely more efficient to have built-in heaters on the power station. Uh, let's see what temperature this is at. Now, I just removed the blanket off the Blue Eddy AC180. If we check in on the timer here, we're at an hour and five minutes. And I did take a picture of this with my thermal camera and the top of the power station was around 53 degrees, but you'll notice the bottom of the power station is still cold. So I'm curious, is this going to charge now? I mean, it just has to be over 32 degrees. So let's connect up the charging cable. It's just a 12 volt battery at this point. Okay, are we gonna get the low temp uh, charging error? Oh, look at that. We are charging. Now, if you remember, this was around 52% state of charge and we had the inverter on and it sat for about an hour. So now we're down to 49% state of charge. So this way also appears to work. Now I am questioning one thing. I'm curious where the temperature sensor is for this setup because if the batteries are still cold and just the top of the power station where the inverter is warm, then technically we're still charging this under 32 degrees. And there's really no way to find that out unless this was completely tore down. But um, what do you guys think about these alternate methods of heating up your power stations? You guys gotta let me know. Okay guys, I'm back inside where it is much warmer. Now this was super interesting to test. I've never tested this before on power stations, this low temperature charging protection. So it was really interesting to see that, yes, they do have low temperature charging protection, but what's really cool is they have power stations out there that have built-in heaters. Now, um, a lot of people know about the Pecron E1000 LFP. This is kind of one of their newest models. It's very updated versus the previous ones. And I will have a full review video coming on this. Uh, in the future, I'm still doing my in-depth testing. And of course, I have other videos lined up. So keep your eye out for this if you wanna see the full testing review video. And of course, I have full reviews on all of these power stations here. So let me know what you guys think about the low temperature charging protection. And if you guys have creative ways to get these uh, to heat up on their own, um, I'd love to see that down in the comment section. So what do you guys do if you are in the cold and you need to charge your power stations up? What creative ways do you heat them up with? So the cooler idea with a heater, I think that worked pretty well. Um, putting the blanket on top, well, Kind of interesting with the Blue Eddy. I'm not sure if the cells actually caught up to full temperature that way. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video and supporting the channel. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you can check out if you're interested in this type of content. We'll see you guys in the next one.